Hello guys, uh, in last video we had look at what exactly is database, how to install Postgres and what exactly is Postgres. Now in this video we will start with understanding some of the basic operations that we can do with database. Uh, we will see how to query the data, how to add the data and it will automatically convince you that this is the best way to store the data. So once you have installed Postgres, what you can do is you can search for PG admin. So I will search for PG admin and once you click on that, you will see that you can open a new PG admin window. So what I'll do is I will open this in another tab. I will close everything else. And uh, if you uh, see the servers, you will at least have one server with a uh, name Postgres equal 10. If you have installed Postgres equal 10, of course, and when you double click on that, you will see that all the databases, login, roles and table spaces open up. For some reason, if it doesn't open, that means you have to log in. So you can enter the uh, username and password that you entered while creating or while installing the Postgres, if you remember correctly in our previous video. And then after doing that, you will see that there will be a couple of databases available in your system already. If not, that's okay we will what we will do is we will start from the scratch so what i will do is i will click, uh, click on create and then database and then i will give it a name so let's say uh, testing data all right so this is just a database name owner is postgres so postgres is basically a user what happens is is uh, in generally in big companies or even if you consider uh, small companies they will have different peoples who will be accessing database and not everyone will have all the uh, permissions right some will be responsible for uh, creating new users while some will be responsible only for checking the data and for, uh, using the data so depending upon that you can select users uh, you can click on save and what will happen is this will create a new database in your application so you can see testing data has been created and inside this uh, inside schemas there will be always a public schema so basically this is a, a default schema in any database inside this you will have uh, another option of tables and this will be empty by default but you can create a new table so if you remember our previous video correctly in a relational database everything is stored inside a table so the table will represent similar kind of data so what we will do is we will uh, create a non GIS data for this video uh, to understand basic working of Postgres and then we will add GIS data to this. All right. So what I will do is I will create a table and let's say we will create first table with the name of uh, mobile phones. So this is a products page. So product product underscore mobile. Okay. And now if you look at the another tab of columns, so this is how you will know that is a relational database. So if you remember our earlier video correctly, in relational database, we have to define columns with their data types and only that type of information will be valid when you insert a new data. So in this example, we will uh, use uh, as we are dealing with products mobile, we will have name, then description, price, if the product is in stock, that means true or false uh, and so on. So one thing that we need to understand here is this primary key. That means uh, sometimes what happens is your uh, table will, contains, uh, will contain two rows having identical values. So it will be really difficult for you to uh, pinpoint a specific row. And that is why we need to add primary ID. That means each row will have a unique ID, which will never be repeated, which, uh, uh, which will, uh, what you can say as an address to that row. And if you remember our uh, last video, I talked about foreign keys where you can connect different tables using their primary ID. Uh, in that case also, this ID will be important. So uh, what we'll do is we'll first have a uh, column name as ID and the type will be serial because this is a serial number and uh, this is the primary key yes and we will understand what is this not null uh, shortly then we will have name uh, which will be character varying of length let's say 200 so 
this is again a really beautiful feature where you can limit the numbers of character in a string so 200 is enough for the name i believe then we'll have a description description and this will again be a character varying of let's say 1000 then we have quantity quantity all right and this will be integer right because you will have 5 10 15 uh, products you will never have 15.5 products right so there is no need to provide length here then we'll have in stock so this will be a boolean so it is either in stock or it is not in stock so it will be a boolean then we'll have price so price can be anything so let's keep it as integer as well and i think that's enough for now so of course you can enter n number of columns you can uh, you know even have a column for the uh, battery size the camera and things like that but we will try to keep this simple so that everyone can understand so as soon as i save this you will see that inside tables i have a new table and for some reason if you cannot see that all you have to do is refresh and that will make sure that now you have that table name inside this table you will have columns and when you open this you will see all the columns that we specified right so uh, these are all the column names and now if i right click on this table you will see that another uh, context menu pops up where i can create uh, i can refresh this table so whenever new data is added and for some reason it is not reflected we can refresh the table we can count the rows and things like that the most important thing that we have right now is scripts so basically if you remember our previous uh, video where i talked about sql structured query language inside that uh, page i i i presented two queries to you one was select star from cars and another one was select star from cities where population is greater than 5 million so these are the queries that we write in our postgres in order to fetch the data or to add the data and do all sorts of things so basically uh, when we use pg admin we get some queries which are predefined so if you want to insert a new data into this table you can click on this insert script if you want to select the data then select script if you want to update the data update script if you want to delete the data then delete script and if you want to create a, a new data uh, that means i'm uh, i mean if you want to create a new table or something like that then you can use create script so uh, if i go to this view data you will see that if i click on all rows everything in this table will be returned and of course there is no data available with us right now and that is why it will return zero but now if i click on this query tool a new window will pop up so you can see that earlier we were at this window and now a new window is generated where i can write my structured query so that select star from cars that is something that we are supposed to write here so if i write select star from products underscore mobile and if i click on this play button to execute this query you will see that we are getting null result of course now what we will do is we'll try to insert data into this table so what i can do is i can simply right click and i can click on insert script and this will generate a insert sql script automatically for us it will have the table name and all the columns which are available and then all we have to do is insert the values inside this if you remember correctly id was representing a serial key and generally we don't specify serial key uh, manually serial key is something that postgres will auto generate so what i can do is i can straight away delete this and remove one question mark from here because if you see the number of question marks are uh, exactly similar to the number of columns that we have all right now i can start writing uh, values that i want to put so first of all name so let's start with one plus so one plus 70 all right now you, uh, you can see that i have written this one plus 70 inside single quote that is because it is a string and we always write string in a quotes now the description so i will put some random description so uh, triple camera 
and then 5000 mAh battery so this is just to random I'm not sure if it is that uh, and then I can write glossy finish and that's all for description I think it's enough in quantity now if you remember correctly our quantity was an integer that means I, I don't need to provide a single quotes now I can easily write a quantity as 40 and that's all in stock it will be true or false so let's say it is true and we have to be sure that uh, we enter true as a boolean value not as a string like this because if I do that let's see what happens and if I enter the price as 38,000 so this is an INR Indian rupees and now if I execute this query you can see that the query executed completely it determined that this true even though it is a string uh, this column represents a boolean and then it converted it into a boolean value so that's that's a smart that's a smart move from postgres now if i go back to my first tab where i have select star from products mobile and if i execute this query voila now we have one entry in our table with id as uh, generated auto generated right name as one plus 70 description quantity boolean and price all right uh, one thing that i would like to tell you is that you can do the same thing with command line as well so if you are a linux user and if you love command day a command line then you can execute the same query using command line as well but since uh, this video or this course is not about the capabilities of postgres but just to introduce you to the postgres so that you can use it uh, for your basic purpose I will stick to the PG admin all right so you can see that now our data is uh, is inside our table so which is fantastic right now I can add as much data as I want so let's say we go with 8 pro which is recently launched and uh, if you are familiar with it it has x-ray camera so I'm not sure and I can write uh, what what else I can write I'm not sure so matte finish maybe all right uh, let's say we have 10 quantity and for now let's say false so we don't have that in stock right now but we we still want to display it on our website so we can do that 58,000 and now if I execute the query again you can see that insert query is executed successfully now I can write the same query here select star from products mobile now before executing this query you can see that earlier it was public dot products mobile and now I have uh, written directly products dot mobile so what is happening here basically everything that we are doing right now is in public schema and that is why uh, it's okay even if I don't write public as a schema name here but if I have my data in different schemas at that time I will have to specify the uh, specify the schema name as well so for now I think uh, we are okay with select star from products mobile and if I directly execute it right now what will happen is the query uh, query editor will execute this query line by line that means this insert into query will again get executed and then this will get executed but of course we don't want that so in order to uh, avoid executing this first query what we will do is we will select our second query and then we will click on this run button what will happen is only the second query or only the selected query will get executed now as you can see again we have uh, oneplus 8 pro all right now this is how we insert the data if i go back to the properties you will see that inside columns uh, we have this one another column known as not null where i can either select yes or no so what exactly is this so sometimes what happens is when you are inserting data into your database some of the columns are mandatory that means in order for you to create a successful row or in order for you to add the feature successfully you will have to have certain columns filled while other columns can be blank so for example in uh, in this products of course so if i want to add a new product i i want the name right without name we cannot add a product that means i will keep this uh, name as a not null and what will happen now is that whenever we are uh, executing an insert query we have to have the name 
for now let's say that description is optional quantity is optional in stock is also optional but price is mandatory so now what will happen is every time we are uh, executing the insert query we must have the name and price written in that otherwise this will not execute let's have a look at that now so if i save this and now let uh, let me try to add a new phone uh, without a name so for uh, for some reason i forgot to add name here all right now uh, if i remove this name and let's see uh, we are triple camera wide angle and flagship all right uh, i add uh, i also forgot to add quantity which is okay in stock true and the price is let's say 120000 all right now if i try to execute this if i want to execute this first of all i will have to select this query because there are uh, a couple of queries available and we don't want to execute all of them now if i try to run this you will get a message of an error saying that null value in column name violating not, not null constraint that means what happened is there was a null value added to the column uh, known as name if you remember correctly name was a not null column right that means i'll have to add name here with the name here so let's say iphone 11 comma and now if i try to execute this awesome we are, we got the new data into our data table right now if i try to execute this you will see that we got the new id of 4 because the uh, ID3 was uh, was an unsuccessful entry but you can see that how easily uh, the Postgres is auto generating IDs and iPhone 11 is here uh, with the description quantity as null because we didn't specify the quantity but price is there of course because price and name are not null uh, uh, entries right so this is how we insert the data into our database and in order for me to select so what i'm doing right now is i'm selecting all the data from my products page but what if i want to see only the mobile phones having the price greater than fifty thousand? most of the time when we go to e-commerce website we have filters right so in order for me to add filter i can write it by including a where clause so where price is greater than 45,000 for example now if I try to execute this you will see that we only get 58,000 one plus eight uh, one plus eight pro and iPhone 11 with 120,000 so you can see how easily we can execute the new query and add the data right so similarly I can do all all sorts of things so with the quantity so quantity is greater than one that means product which is in stock so i got this but the quantity is different than stock right so product cannot be in stock but you can also add a quantity so this all this depends upon what exactly is the product or what exactly is the your your e-commerce website is trying to show so sometimes uh, when there is a sale you can see that you are in stock that means your buy now button is is disabled but you can again see that in stock 100 pieces uh, pieces are available right so technically quantity is 100 but in stock is false so this can be used there so similar to that uh, we can we can do all sorts of things like that now i can also write in stock is equal to true that means products which are only in stock so you can see that we only get true and okay so what happened here earlier when i executed this uh, query what i did is i executed like this and that's why we got two iphones now is a great time to see how to delete any uh, entry from our database now think about it if we didn't had this id column the uh, this iphone 11 and iphone 11 would have been exact same entries right so there would have been two entries with exact same data inside them and if we wanted to delete them uh, we could have written a where clause right where name is equal to iPhone 11 delete but what would happen in that case is 
all the entries with the name iPhone 11 will get deleted. That means you will le uh, you will be left with no entries of iPhone 11. But certainly we want one entry, right? So that is why ID is important. Now what I can do is I can write delete from products mobile where id is equal to 4 and now if i select this and execute you will see that one entry is deleted successfully and now if i try to select from product so you can see that uh, how i have only selected the uh, half of my query so that i will get all the products and i will leave this where clause because when you select anything and run only that portion is considered as query you can see that now we only have one iPhone 11. So that is how delete query works. And you can add multiple queries or multiple conditions in this. So I can select product. First of all, let me just add a couple of products so that we can have a, a variety. All right, so we will have a 7 Pro uh, with let's say dual camera, big phone. All right, uh, I think that will be all uh, then Maybe we'll also add quantity. Notice that we have to be uh, we have to be very careful about the arrangement of all the columns here and arrangement of of all the data here because uh, this each column name will represent to each value respectively. So the first column name will represent the first value. So we have to be very careful with that. So the name is first, description is second, in stock is third. Quantity is fourth, so let's say 30, and then price is then uh, after that. So let's say how much? Let's say 48,000. Now I'll have to select this and I'll have to execute. All right, what went wrong? So quantity does not exist. I made a spelling mistake, but thanks to PG admin, we got the uh, error and we can resolve this. So quantity Q U A N T I T Y. Now, if I try to execute, insert it successfully, nice. Then we can have something like MI8 Pro. And let me leave the description because I don't want to type and bore you guys. So I'll remove description. So in stock false, quantity, let's say we don't want to give any quantity. So I will give it as null, but the price, of course, we need price. So 18,000. I will select this, execute, entry is added and finally we will have realme 5, uh, in stock true, quantity 40 and price is 15,500. Alright, now we got a, a good amount of data. I will not say very much but yeah, we got a data. Alright, now if what I can do is. I can now see all the data description sometimes description is null now what I can do is now if I want to add multiple features uh, uh, now if I want to add multiple conditions I can do that by this so uh, your query can be spread across multiple lines it's okay so I can write where in stock is equal to true and price is greater than 30,000 now it will only execute products which are in stock and at the same time price is greater than 30,000 and price is less than 60,000. All right. Now if I save this and if I execute, you will see that we got two products having stock as true and price range between 30 to 60,000. So this is how we can add multiple queries and we can <clears throat> get the results. Uh, we can also add or um, so let's say that you just you're just interested in seeing all the mobile phones whether they are in stock or not uh, available uh, within your price range so what you can do is you can remove this query for now you can write and price is greater than so you don't need and because you're just starting the query so where price is greater than 30,000 and price is less than 60,000 and inside bracket you can write in stock is equal to true or in stock is equal to false i know it does not make sense right now because uh, 
we can completely omit this right we can omit in stock true or false but i'm just showing you this so this is a or and if i execute this you will get all the products even if they are present in stock uh, or not you will get all the products within price range of 30000 to 60000 so this is how we can fetch or retrieve our data uh, according to the conditions that we desire so similar to this we can add uh, multiple conditions while deleting the data as well now the last thing that we are left with is update the data that means for uh, after some time if i get a stock uh, and now if i want to change my in stock is equal to true for oneplus 8 pro i can do that by using update query so update products mobile and then set in stock is equal to true where and then I can add any condition. I can add name is equal to one plus eight pro or ID is equal to true uh, two or anything like that. For now, let's just say that uh, ID is equal to two. All right. Now, if I execute this, you will see that we get update equals to one. And now if I try to look at uh, my phone, one plus eight pro. Awesome. You can see that now it is changed to true right so this is how you can uh, update the data as well now if i want to add one more column let's say uh, let's say if i want to add a column of uh, uh, probably make uh, but we already have make so let's just uh, it does not make sense at all let's say we add one more column of camera so uh, how much pixels is the uh, the main camera or let's say the front camera so what we can do is we can then add a new column by simply clicking on properties going inside columns and then clicking on front camera all right so notice that i have used underscore uh, in order to use multiple words because if you provide space you might get some problems while uh, using this uh, column name in your in your code whether you are in python or in javascript or something like that hence it makes sense to you know have uh, have two words connected by uh, underscore or something like that so that it will be treated as only one word all right so what you can do is front camera and of course it will be uh, maybe integer yeah Right. now if i save this uh, you can see that the cam uh, the, okay, the the front camera column is not added here but now if i execute the query again you can see that we got the front camera with the value as null so if i want to update the front cameras what i can do is now uh, now that i know uh, how to add update query or how to execute update query what i can do is for now i can con uh, assume that all the front cameras of all the phones are uh, let's say uh, 20 pixels so what i can do is update products mobile so i will copy this i will paste it here set front camera is equal to 20 and that's all i don't need a condition right because i want to execute 20 everywhere so what i can do is i can simply select this and i can execute and that's all you can see that we have updated all the information in our data table now if i go back and if i execute this query again uh, select star from product mobile you will see that we got front camera updated in all of our table so you can easily see that uh, that how easy it is to use database and how helpful it is to update our data to retrieve our data to delete our data and also to select our data using different conditions uh, these conditions can get complicated as you uh, move ahead in time uh, as you will uh, you will try to uh, mimic the real life uh, problems into database you will see that uh, easily you can add multiple uh, conditions such as cities having population greater than 5 million and cities are not uh, you know uh, like what we can say uh, cities which are not uh, inside a zone let's say uh, anything like that like tier one zone so cities which are not tier one zone cities having greater than 5 million population so this will tell you that okay this is a city which can become a tier one because they have a lot of people 
and also they are not right now tier one and things like that. So you can easily develop your own uh, <coughs> conditions and uh, use case in order to use database. Uh, database. So this was a basic introduction to database. Of course, database is more more than this. Now we will have a look at how to create different databases and then how to copy the uh, data from one table into another table. So in next video, we will have a look at that and then we will dive into GIS data. So until this point, we were dealing with normal data without any GIS uh, uh, GIS information such as geometry or lat lung or things like that. But in next video, we will have a look at that. Thank you.